pondering over the first reading, of course, Isaiah is that, uh, that prophet of longing so often. We, they sometimes talk about him as the fifth gospel. His, his, uh, there's so much that speaks about the prophecies of what's coming with the Messiah. And here we have this people that's been told, you know, you're going to no, no longer be a people. You're going to be sent, uh, taken out of the land. The temple is going to be destroyed. All this stuff uh, up through chapter 39 of Isaiah. And then 40 through uh, 55 is, okay, you're in exile now. Hope you're going to come back. And then uh, some, some more on that later. But um, here... He's in the midst of this, you know, you got to bring yourself back. you got to draw yourself back to the Lord. There's going to be um, greater things. He says, no longer will your teacher hide himself. But with your own eyes, you shall see your teacher. This great longing of the people of Israel. They're saying, when? How long, O Lord? When, O Lord? And, and even in the psalm, we hear, blessed are they all who wait for the Lord. This longing that there's this, this pining to be able to see their teacher. Remembering back to those days in the desert. When Almighty God led them by fire and by cloud. Led them through the desert. And Moses spoke with God face to face. As one man speaks to another man, uh, as the scripture says. This, this call where God says, And from behind a voice shall sound in your ears, This is the way, walk in it. When you would turn to the right or to the left. Now with all this, we see, okay, God is saying, I will be so present to you, you will be able to recognize my presence. You will be able to see me. Now, of course, we talk about Moses talking to God face to face as one man would talk to another and yet in another place we know that he doesn't see the face of Almighty God because God says that no man can see my face without dying and so he covers him in, in the cleft of the rock and he can only see the back of Almighty God and yet he's still be able to be in that presence but when Jesus comes into our humanity now we can see the face of God he who has seen me has seen the Father, Jesus says to his disciples. That we can see God now face to face. We can see the teacher who is here, who is leading us. This great longing finally fulfilled in the coming of God incarnate. God made man. And you're saying, well, that's good for those who were there 2,000 years ago. <laughs> what about us? And yet God says to us, I am still here present. In the gospel today, we hear about how he summons his disciples and gives them his own authority over unclean spirits to cure every sickness and disease. Proclaim that the kingdom of God, heaven is at hand. And he says, cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, drive out demons. You're doing all the things that I have been doing. You were now given that authority. And so he gives that authority to the church. Not because she's an institution that the Lord has started up, but because she is the body of Christ. And so he is still present in our midst. He comes to us through the sacraments, especially, most especially through the Eucharist. But he also comes to us and he teaches us through the church. That the church is not just an institution, but the very body of Christ. He says, see, I am still here present among you. So that you don't have to ask, which direction am I supposed to go in? But to listen to the uh, infallible teaching of the church. Now, of course, in the midst of the infallible teaching of the church, there's also lots of theological debate that goes on, and that has to be there. And you can say, okay, I believe this, I don't believe that. But in terms of the doctrines and dogmas, the infallible teaching of the church, we say, okay, this is God speaking to us here and now today. That he didn't just leave us 2,000 years ago when he ascended into heaven. 
but he sent his Holy Spirit to continue to be his presence among us. And he even speaks to each of us. Now, of course, that takes discernment. We have to balance that off of his other word in terms of the, the, the Gospels, the, the Bible, and, and the teaching of the church. Because we, cannot, we don't always hear correctly, but the Lord does continue to speak to us, leading us to his heart. We listen to his, his witness in the great saints, even the saints of our time that are still moving in our midst. And then the Lord says to us, and I want to make you a saint. I want you to be part of that uh, voice of my presence in the world. May we truly turn to the Lord today, open to his word, with that longing of Israel to see the face of God, waiting for the Lord, for blessed are all who wait for the Lord, and knowing that he comes to us in the Eucharist, that we get to gaze on his face, that he feeds us with his very body and blood, and he's given to us his very Holy Spirit in, our, in baptism and confirmation to make us the body of Christ.